Welcome friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm glad that you're able to make it to this place. Now, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Listen to me, I want you to listen uninterruptedly to the message I'm about to bring to you. God has given me a word for you and your life will never be the same again. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and don't forget to make comments. I would like to read your comments and don't forget to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button to receive notification for new uploads of videos. Now listen to me, you are in for the best of time. God's word is going to come and change your life. The God bless you. Don't forget, I'm going to come back and pray with you before the end of this video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you again. Those who wait for luck, let me tell you, luck is so, the narrow, the narrow part of luck to success is so, if it be you, if it not be you. When you apply luck all the time, in fact, I've seen people who do betting all their life and they didn't win once. Can you imagine? All his life, all his hard-earned money, he keeps using it to try. And you see, there's something about that thing. Once you have tried for some time, people will now be encouraging you. <laughs> They'll be telling you that if you stop now, you, have, you are the one that has lost. You shouldn't stop. If you stop now, you are, you are a loser. So, so he, he's thinking that one day, oh, yeah, my child, the number figure will just eat. And I've seen people for a whole lifetime not getting it right. Imagine. The match they are playing hero. You say I should be telling the, the what's my business with the match? I should be the one that will predict whether it's draw or it's a win. I cannot predict anything. No. Praise God. If everybody is like me, honestly, those who are doing betting will not, they cannot, it's not possible. They cannot sell. <laughs> they cannot sell. If people are thinking like I'm thinking. But do you know how many people are in this chain of betting thing now? There are young men now that they don't have any job. The only thing they are doing is to be betting. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. when you ask him what do you do for a living, he say I do. <laughs> Are you doing? now that you have put your life on probability? You put success on probability when you can put it on a more certain level. You can be so sure that if you follow the right step, you can get to the right destination. You're now doing luck, saying hey, you, you, what I do? when. Hallelujah. Look, the time I knew that lottery has taken over this generation was when I was in uh, South Africa. I, I traveled to South Africa one time, and one of my friends said, Pastor, I want you to follow me somewhere in the evening. I want to show you where they play real lottery. Really gambling. So, very big casino in the night, around, around to 11 in the night. That was where I saw a woman of 90-something years old. I'm telling you, it's coming to play lottery. Then I asked that my friend, is an Indian man, I said, is she coming? He said, yes. He said, those are the addicts. She's been doing it since she was young. Nobody can stop her. So she's still hoping that one day she will win one million rand. <laughs> if you put your life on, always hoping that one day, maybe why not just understand what the principle says and follow the principle? The Bible says, this book of the law will not depart from your mouth. You meditate in both day and night that you might observe to do all. Say then. That means there will be assurance. I said you'll be you have good success and you prosper. This one is not trial and error. This one is that you are precise. You know what to do. How I many of us for the past few weeks now, this year, we've been I mean this month, we've been receiving instructions, divine instructions. How I many of us are ready to apply them? Because it's in the application. I had online. Pastor Femi was telling us that if you know 10 principles and you are not doing them, 10 principles of success, and you are not doing any one of them, and somebody only knows two and is doing it, that person will be more successful than you. That's the truth. That is the truth. Love is an action word. Submission to is action. You don't wish these things. You do it. They are practical. Just like women knows when a man does not love them, Men too knows when a woman does not respect them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Look, it is easier for women to be comfortable in submission if they try it. If a woman try, if a woman tries submission, look, men are the easiest to catch. Men. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not a 
You see, because some people will be thinking now that pastor is protected. I'm not, I'm just telling you that from what, <laughs> eh? Aha. I'm just telling you, that's the truth. Men are easy. Praise God. The moment a man knows that a woman is in submission to him, that man has become the slave of that woman. Because he knows that that is not common. That man, in fact, if you check that scripture in submission, by the time we get to the last verse, can we read the last verse of Ephesians? The last verse, Ephesians 5. I think verse 30 is something. The last verse. Ephesians chapter 5, the last verse. Can we read it quickly? Can we have it on the screen? Hallelujah. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let wife see that she respects her husband. Is that the last verse? But there is a place I'm looking for that now says, is it let each one of you be in submission to one another? Verse 21. Okay, let's go to verse 21. Is it 21? Verse 21, quickly. Ephesians 5. 21. Ephesians 5, 21. Quickly. You see? Verse 21. Submitting to what? In the what? So in the real sense, God is not saying that the man too cannot listen to his wife and submit to his wife. God, look at it now. He says submitting one, and one to one another in the fear of God. That means men, sometimes we have to listen to their wives too. But when it comes to submission... God is looking at the woman to start the process. And when it comes to love, God is looking at the man to love his wife. He's not saying that the wife will not love him back. No. He's going to be reciprocal. The seed you sow, you will reap. I've come to realize in relationship, the best, anything you want in your marriage, sow it. That's what I've come to realize. The easiest, you want anything you want, whether you are the man or you are the woman, whatever you want in your marriage, demonstrate it. Sow the seed of it. You want your wife to easily forgive you when she offends you, you to easily forgive her. You want her to listen to you, you to listen to her. Everything you want, sow the seed. Praise the name of the Lord. So in summary, the last verse, which is verse 33, he said, love your wife. He said, and wife, respect your husband. May the Lord give us understanding this month. May, no, may our family be settled. May every family enjoy peace. May every relationship enjoy peace. May, may no any family that is, that is, in, that, is in, that is that lacks peace, may God restore their peace. Any family that lacks love, may God restore their love. Any family that lacks joy, may God restore their joy. Marriage is a beautiful thing. May your marriage become a beautiful thing. May your relationship become a beautiful, beautiful thing. May God honor your faith. Every single person here, those who are not yet married, online, on site, your dream of a happy family. May that dream come through. You can't say amen without prayer. May your dream for a happy home come through. Ah, you are not saying amen to that prayer. Every single person here, your dream for a happy home will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I said they will come to pass. Don't let anybody deceive you. They tell you things like, uh, marriage don't work these days. There's no love in Lagos. It's not true. At least in this church, I know, I know a lot of marriages. Amen. So, don't let anybody deceive you and make you feel, oh, uh, marriage, uh, there's no marriage again. There is still marriage. There are still people who follow the basic principles of marriage. If you're a young lady here, God will give you such a person. If you're a man here, God will give you such a person. But can I tell you something? Whatever you want, be that thing. You want a respectful wife, be humble too. You want a loving husband, be a loving woman too. Be what you want. I've come to realize once you are that thing, you will get it. Even if you are already married. I've seen people change their spouse by just becoming what they want her to be or what they want him to be. Hallelujah. My prayer for you tonight is this. Your dream for a happy home will come through. Anyone, any home that is suffering tonight will command supernatural healing. Every home that is under chaos, a chaos, that is a chaotic situation, complications, I command the peace of God to reign in that home. I decree the peace of God to reign in your home. I pray for every member of your family, children, spouses, I declare in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not use anyone. 
Satan will not have access to use anyone. You see, Adam and Eve, at least to some extent, they had a beautiful home. But they had issues too. But Cain and Abel, you see how they slaughtered themselves. And you wonder how hatred can walk into the midst of brothers that were born from the same home. I pray for every family here tonight and online. I declare peace and love will reign in your home. Your, the spirit of Cain will cast them out of our families. Oh, you didn't say amen to that prayer. The spirit of Cain will cast out of every family. We declare in the name of Jesus the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood into our families in the name of Jesus. One of the things I've come to realize is that family is like a football team. Every family is like a football team. Have you noticed that if you see a family, in fact, there's no family you get to. If they have up to two children, the firstborn can be very quiet. The secondborn will be a little aggressive. Or the firstborn will be aggressive. The secondborn will be very calm and quiet. There's no family that doesn't have that flavor of different flavor of you see it in your, there will be one that will be very quiet, hardly talk. There will be one that, before you even ask any question, it's like Peter. It's like Peter. You know, it's like Peter. He has answered. And you, you are the one that will be telling me, like, you are not the one I'm talking to. He wants to answer for everybody. Abby? Do you know the family needs everybody? You need the quiet one because the, the Bible says there is time for everything. There's a time to be quiet. You need the talking one too because there are times that quietness will not work. And somebody will need to go and defend the family somewhere and speak to them eyeball to eyeball. So God creates marriage in such a way that he has everybody is complete. Husband will be quiet, wife will be a little outspoken. Wife will be quiet, husband will be a little outspoken. Hallelujah. Have you not noticed? It is the fact that there are these, those differences are there does not mean that they will be disagreeing. God brings those, all those differences for compliment, so that they can complement themselves. Hallelujah. In your family, you will complement yourself. Your team will work. The team God has created in that family will work. You are not saying amen. amen. Every member of your household and your family, I declare, as they play their role, a successful family will be born. A, an enviable family will be born. People will look from afar and they will admire your family. They will admire your children. They admire your spouse. They admire you too. In the name of Jesus. Your family will be an epitome of a Christian family. Your family will be a symbol of a Christian family. Your family will be a model of a Christian family. In the name of Jesus, your family will be a, 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 a model of a Christian family. You are not saying amen to that prayer. Jump up on your feet, whatever you are. We're going to be praying for our family in a few minutes before we take communion. I'd like you to pray for yourself. That Lord, through me, I will build a happy and successful family. A happy and successful family shall be born through me shall be built through me. I receive wisdom and grace and favor. And I'll pass the legacy to the generation of my children. My children too, when they start having their family, they will build a happy and successful family. Because they are coming out of one, it will be easy for them to build one. You are not praying. Because they are coming out of one, it will be easy for them to build one. Because they have seen one before, it will be easy for them to duplicate it. Pray, Lord, for myself and my wife that will receive wisdom and grace to build a happy and successful family. So our children can see and they can go ahead and do it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Please open your eyes, especially for those who are already married. 
whatever you are doing now, you are showing your children, you are giving them an example. You are giving them a script, whatever you are doing now. I, I watch my father love my mother. My father is so in love with my mother. She, he was a banker. If you enter my father's office, you will see on his table the picture of his wife. Not even our own picture. I have challenged him before. And he told me, he said, that's my wife. That my father loves my wife, my, sorry, that my father loves my mother. We children, we cannot even doubt it. I'm serious. It's a picture is, my, if you see my mother, you will see her wear very expensive wristwatch and, that my father himself does not even have, and he bought it for her. <laughs> when we challenge him as boys, ah, how come you are, you say, look, that's my wife. That's where people will know whether I have money or I don't have money. He said, once she's looking good, I'm looking good. My father can repeat jackets. But he won't allow his wife to repeat jackets. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And because I saw it, it was easy for me to. Once children are shown, honestly, because they won't struggle. But when you don't give them a good example, then you now leave them into chances to be struggling. That is, if it be you, if it not be you. But when a child knows, he has seen it. Amen. I've never heard that my mother challenged my father that my father has a girlfriend. I'm not, I'm, I don't even, I've never had it. I'm not saying they don't quarrel, but that it is a, there is a girlfriend. Where? My father will tell you that this woman is expensive enough for him to now go and be spending his money. That's what he used to say. He said, this woman is expensive enough. So he said, I don't have money for extra woman. And when I saw that, I saw that it worked for him. I pray for you. You will leave a legacy of a godly family for your children. Your grandchildren will use your examples. You won't live careless life. You are not saying amen. amen. Let me tell you something. When you see people living anyhow, it's because they don't have understanding. Have you not seen that when people now get old, they don't start living correctly? It's too late, my friend. When it's now 70 something, something, you now start living well. When your children, when they are still little, that's when they should see how you love your wife, how you submit to daddy. You are calling daddy bastard in front of your children. You know, you know what you are doing? You are raising a vagabond. You are raising a rebellious spirit. In front of your child, your, your child, you are telling your husband, stupid. Two of you are quarreling in front of children. You know, so, and these children are so, they are looking at you guys and say, and they are saying, when I grow up, I won't, I won't live this kind of life. That means, are you not ashamed? That before small, small children, even if you are angry, you can't get inside the room or just keep quiet. I show you a place in here on Sunday. Answer not a fool. Sometimes you keep quiet. You win in silence at times. It's not every time you have to reply. It's not everything they tell you you have to reply. I prophesy. Anyone that has lived carelessly up till now, as you repent, God will show you mercy. As you repent, God will show you mercy. Everyone who has maybe done it the wrong way in the past, you, God will give you grace to rewrite your story. Amen. You see, have hope. Your, yes, you, are, you see, have the time to rewrite that story. You will rewrite your story. Amen. You will rewrite your story. Amen. You will rewrite your story. Amen. If we don't know anybody who rewrite, wrote their story, Pastor Deboye did. You will, God will give you grace to rewrite your own story. Amen. I pray for everyone here online and on site. In the name that is above every name. God will give you goodly, godly children. Amen. Your children will not miss their track. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When it is time for your children to make the choice of who to get married to. They won't miss steps. Amen. They will choose well. Amen. Like my mother will pray. Amen. They, will, they will choose correctly. You are not praying. Lift up your. Let's pray for our, the next generation. Karaba. I sense in my heart our church is 
we see most of us our children are getting to that point where they, their father every every young person in this church from your family open your mouth and pray for every young person in your family that are making choice of who to get married to that god will order their steps you are not praying this prayer in jesus precious name we pray you see why that prayer is important and it's a prayer that you shouldn't say because your children are still small that you will not pray it's because while you are busy carefully raising your children there are so many careless parents and their own children is going to the same school with your children when i see some things on social media i used to ask myself is the, is the head of this father and this mother correct There was one we saw. If you see a young girl, a small girl, a baby, a baby should be left to be baby. And, and they were dancing, and they were, the daddy was happy because they are ignorant. Daddy, ignorant. Mommy, ignorant. Hallelujah. We're planning to start parenting Bible course in our church so that young parents will have to go through that school. We're already working on the curriculum. Because it's important for people to understand what parenting is all about. So, why you need to pray for your children that God will direct them and they will not choose wrongly is because there are wrong people out there. I'm sure you know that. You can train your child, it's so well behaved, but not about long Lift up your voice this morning, evening. And I want to pray for every young person in your family, your children, that when it is time for them to make choice, Father, you will mention their name. Lekatasa Pusha, pray for your unborn children. Pray. Pray, pray. Pray, we have one more minute to pray. We pray for all our kids. You will guide their steps. They won't choose from the aliens. Because light and darkness has nothing to has no fellowship together. Radha she proda suta la baba bayada. Ibalo shatan dariba so prandalia da bayada. Yes, thirty seconds more. Le prada baso prandebo shata da da baba. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I was discussing with a senior friend of mine whose children are at that stage. In fact, about three of them, one already brought in a wife, and the remaining two, they are believing God for them too. And I was having a conversation with this man of God, and I wanted to learn because me, I'm not there yet. I'm still far away. And he said, he said, Pastor, that's one of the most critical stage. He said, he said, actually, with what is happening everywhere. He said, I pray for them more than I pray for myself now. Because that's a critical stage. And once they get it right, you know, that means another generation has passed with that. Are you hearing me? They will get it right. Amen. Father, we stand upon the authority in the word of God tonight in agreement, in unity of faith. The Bible says we'll make a decree, the decree shall be established. He said the keys of the kingdom of heaven has been given to us. Whatever we bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. The ones we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. He said, if two or three shall agree as touching anything or not, it shall be done to them. We come into agreement in unity of faith in one accord. And we declare for all our children, both the ones that are born, the ones that are unborn, both the ones that are at that stage of making choice. When it comes to that time of making choice, Lord, they will not miss it. Amen. Lord, you will give them the spirit of sensitivity. Amen. The right people you bring across their path. Amen. Men of like-minded, men, women of like-minded, you bring across their path. Amen. They won't go and choose from the circle of the aliens in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
We pray that, Lord, your light will guide their path and direct their path in the name of Jesus. We want to be able to see what you're doing in our lives pass to the next generation. It will be so, Lord. Wave your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise tonight. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, we command that the communion table tonight is blessed. As we eat and drink from your flesh and your blood, we declare an impartation that will make us to be a good example. We'll be a good role model. In the name of Jesus. While we are living, we'll be raising, we'll be raising a better version of us. In the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, if anybody that has gotten it wrong in the past, let your mercy speak. For those who are watching online, whatever table you have set before yourself there, the same blessing on this table will command it extended to your table. Those who can't take communion because of where they are right now, Lord, as they release their faith, everything you'll be doing on this table tonight, you'll do for them too. We declare a divine alignment with our destiny, with all the choices we'll be making. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Wow, what a great word from heaven. What a word. Now, one thing I know that I'm assured of, and I know is that God will always confirm his words. I declare and I decree. Every word that has been spoken in your direction will find fulfillment in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus for those who might be sick in the body, receive healing in your body. Receive healings in your bone. Receive healing in your, in your blood. Everywhere sickness might be hiding in your body. The Bible says as soon as a stranger hears my voice, they will run out of their hidden place. Every disease and sickness in your body, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I declare Declare God's blessings over your life. If you desire a divine intervention in one area of your life, maybe your marriage, your relationship, your finance, I declare that God will step into your case and turn things around for your good. God bless you. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends and family, make comments. I want to read your comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back again with another very powerful message. God bless you.